Selling Online Today, featuring Daniel from shellacnails.eu. If you have sales, you can overcome most problems. Mm-hmm. If you have the best plan in the world and no sales, that's insurmountable. Making a great living by selling online is possible if you know who to turn to for help. Welcome to Selling Online Today, the show that features the winners of the online sales world sharing their stories of domination of eBay, Amazon, or their own sites. Here's your host, Patrick Conlin. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Selling Online Today, the show that brings you all you need to know to successfully sell online in today's changing environment. Well, firstly, let's chat to someone who is on that journey, and it's Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Patrick. Daniel has a really interesting business, and I'm really excited to delve in a little bit more with him. It's called Sheliac Nails, and it's a whole series of nail treatments and products and accessories. And it's really interesting because it's right in the heart of, of the women's online market, which I'm involved in myself through Women's Shoes. So I'll be interested to get chatting a bit more about that. He runs this business by himself and with some staff, and he's been at it since 2012. And hey, I'll just hand it right over to you, Daniel. Just fill us in a little bit more on what this whole business is all about. Sure, Patrick. Hello, everyone. Just a quick rundown of the business as such. We started in November 2012. I was actually on an Enterprise Island New Frontiers course, which basically works with startups. And if you have a startup idea, then you can progress and get financing and such like. The startup business we were working on was actually to supply medical statistical data to global pharmaceutical companies. Hmm. So you can see immediately the connection between that and nail gel. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, while sitting in the pub one day doing some strategy, my friend said to me that he's tired of working on all of this and let's import something for the crack. And that's word for word what he said to me. Wow. I asked him what he wanted to import. He said he had no idea there, but I was had a talent for uh, sourcing product from external markets and asked me to go ahead and do something. So my sister-in-law was a beautician, Mm -hmm. and uh, she suggested that shellac gel was the next big thing hitting the beauty market. Now, shellac gel is similar to nail polish. It's a coating that goes on your nails. The huge advantage to it is that it's guaranteed to last for a minimum of 14 days. It does not chip, scratch, or peel. And for the ladies in the audience, they'll know exactly what a great advantage that is. For the men, just go with the flow. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Well, I see my wife actually on many an occasion, depending on where she goes to get her nails done, having issues with them perhaps chipping or breaking in some cases. And then there are other gel-based ones that seem to last a bit longer. So, hey, that's as far as it goes for me. But I know it is an issue. Yes, it's a huge issue. I mean, the ladies will explain how you can paint your nails with a nail polish and before you even do two things you've chipped or you've got a scratch across it or something like that so there's a huge advantage in this and the limit to 14 days is merely because at the base of the nail plate you'll get a growth area showing as your nail grows Mm -hmm. so you would have to refill it or actually re well we would suggest removal and repainting Mm -hmm. Uh, So that's the limit is the fact that the nails grow. Wow. It's a very interesting product in itself. Let's just look at it from the e-commerce point of view. You have this website. Do you sell on other platforms like Amazon or eBay? Yes, we are actually active on 12 different online platforms. So we sell on Amazon, uh, eBay. Uh, We have a number of our own websites, shellacnails.eu being the uh, main website as such. Mm -hmm. Uh, We also supply directly to beauticians. We have a sales team that's out on the roads selling to beauticians. And we have a website specifically for beauticians that they can sign on and get more competitive pricing. Okay, so it's like a trade login type thing? Exactly. They have to supply registration documents for the company and uh, certificates to show that they qualified before they can buy the products. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, that's quite the 
all round business model when it comes to e-commerce. Of all those marketplaces, the likes of Amazon and eBay or the third party marketplaces, as, as we would call them, which do you prefer yourself for the area of nails? I think the most exciting part is the online sales mm-hmm. because we're selling now. We've sold to every single country within the EU. We've supplied as far as Japan. We've actually supplied to Australia, New Zealand, and a bit into USA and Canada. So uh, we cover a huge market from, from the website. From the website as opposed to the third-party marketplaces? Yeah. Uh, the third-party marketplaces, we currently sell on Germany, France, uh, USA, and UK. There's a problem with we've been asked to sell on Japan Yes, and I can't remember where else, uh, one of the other areas. But the problem that we have is that nail gel is incorrectly classified on Amazon's platform as nail polish. Okay. Polish is flammable and gel is not. So it's seen as a hazardous item. So we're busy working on that to get, get into the Japanese market as such. Is that problem only on the Japanese marketplace? You don't have that difficulty with the UK or Europe or America? No, the UK is okay. France has recently been sorted out. The only place where it really shows up now is the Royal Mail seem to have a problem with it. Yes, if it's considered flammable as such. Yes, that's correct. I have that issue here regionally or some of the local businesses that I would have help back in the day get their initial online offerings up and going in the area of auto spares. They would be always constantly looking for ways to be able to send spray paint to the UK. And because it's flammable and aerosoled, it's really, really difficult to get around the postage dilemma with the likes of the Royal Mail, etc. So, yeah, they're different dilemmas which we all face what about the area of fulfillment by amazon have you delved into it at all we use fulfillment by amazon in some of the marketplaces and that works well enough for us amazon's great at bringing in a a number of customers and uh, then it's you know the challenge is to migrate them so that you know you can contact them through social media and things like that absolutely well they own the customer as such, so it's always a challenge to try and work a way of bringing them over to your own website so that you can continue to develop them as customers. When you're dealing with the area of interacting with your customers, would you afterwards use things like little leaflets and flyers when you're posting out to just bring them in that way? Or do you have a, a secret formula that you would use to make that migration of the customers? Uh, we use a number of different ways. Yeah, flyers and, and such like. What we also do is we, we release a collection every three months. And uh, we would only release that collection on our websites. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't release that direct to Amazon. So it's a case of informing the customers that if they want the latest colors in the ranges, then it's a case of coming direct to us rather than going to Amazon or eBay or one of the other external platforms. Yeah, well, that's actually really well thought out because you're giving them a little bit of exclusivity for their loyalty by directing them back to the website. And and that's really good. That's the way you want to do it as opposed to just offering, which everybody normally does, just a discount code to be able to purchase directly on the website and hope for the best there. Yes, that's worked very well for us. And I'm pleased to say we've even got to the point now where our new collection, we're currently about a week away from having stock for summer 2015. Mm-hmm. And we've already started to pre-sell that. So uh, customers can come online, get a secret link if you're part of our Facebook page or part of our website. And you can actually pre-order before the product's even available to the rest of the public, which is, is great. It works very well for us. Well, you you mentioned there two things of interest to me. Number one, you obviously import the products from another country, but you must have some sort of worldwide rights over it. Is that right? Or do you manufacture it yourself? No, we don't have worldwide rights. It's something that we're working on, and we're actually looking at bringing the product into Ireland in bulk and actually manufacturing here. Mm -hmm. But currently, we import the product from uh, China, and we compete with a number of other people that also import the product. We're fortunate to be one of the largest distributors of the product. And I regularly visit China. I visit at least twice a year 
to build up this the relationship with them. It sounds like you certainly are one of the bigger players. I imagine and hope and keep my fingers crossed that the likes of the Southern Irish government and bodies that deal with business should be fairly excited about you being able to start manufacturing the product in Ireland. Are you getting any support from the local bodies? Yes, I mean, the, the local, you know, right from Waterford Chamber of Commerce, the local enterprise offices, the Enterprise Island, there's so many different areas that you can get support from. It's probably, I suppose, the biggest challenge is getting the correct place for the support that you want. But uh, yeah, they are encouraging and uh, we do get phenomenal help from them. I uh, suppose what also helped is just over six weeks ago, we won the Waterford Chamber Small Business of the Year Award. Yeah, well, congratulations on that. Uh, thanks very much. So, uh, you know, that's raised our profile and got us out there quite a bit more. You mentioned that you had people going around the different salons. How many members of staff do you have helping you? Uh, we have two sales staff at the moment, and uh, we're tentatively looking at a third. Of mm -hmm. course, the big move for us is once we've secured the business model in Ireland is to roll that out to the United Kingdom. Yes, well, it's S-H-E-L-L-S-E, nails.eu, for those who who are able at the moment to go on and have a rummage around the site while we're chatting. I like it. It's colorful. It's clean. Nice to see your telephone number right at the top. That's always a big, important aspect for me. I hate going on to a website and not being able to see a telephone number for customer care. So that's great. Free delivery, always a great help for that initial reeling the customer in because if they know they're going to not get extra costs, added on well then you're competing with all the other marketplaces which generally do that so yeah it's definitely colorful and very clean in the sense that it's not too hard to navigate through so you've obviously put a lot of attention and work into it are your platforms all linked up together do they synchronize the likes of amazon and ebay with your website or is it just a manual updating of stock i suppose you don't really have the same issues because if you're importing in bulk perhaps you have enough to meet demand at any one time uh, sadly, Patrick, that's probably one of our biggest issues is the fact that we manually update stock. We have Owen who looks after the online platforms and uh, I'm sure you'll see him busy working away there because not only do we have, if a color goes out of stock, we've got 12 platforms to update. That color could be involved in six or eight different variations. It could be in a kit. It could be in a two pack or something else or things like that. So that's really difficult to keep that on board. Thankfully, yes, because we bring in bulk, it's uh, not something that happens too often, shall we say. Mm -hmm. Well, it can be done. And there are some platforms out there, albeit they all come with their necessary expenses. I understand where you're coming from, because in the area of women's shoes, which I sell online and also have a bricks and mortar retail shop up here in the north, you do find that because there's a lot of size variations, if we sell a pair online on our website, we have to immediately get it deducted from eBay, from Amazon, from eBay.com, from Amazon.com, and from all the different European marketplaces, more or less within five or ten minutes, so that we don't sell it again. So there is an amount of synchronization which has to happen, and it usually happens once you start selling more online. So if we sell a pair on Amazon, it automatically deducts from eBay on our website and our till system, so to speak, in store. So it's one of the biggest challenges for the, the retailer who's selling multi variations or parent and child products online on different platforms. So that's certainly a, a biggie that needs to be addressed. It is a biggie and uh, something that we are are working on. I suppose mm -hmm. what we do at the moment is we have a percentage ratio. So mm -hmm. when stock comes in, we split it across the platforms according to a certain percentage. Yes. You mentioned earlier on there that you use uh, social media to talk about exclusive deals that you have for your customers. So do you find that social media helps when you're selling your products or is it a bit of a white elephant or a new thing that just comes and goes or, or do you find it a good channel for you? I think as long as you keep in mind that it's not about the number of likes or the number of followers that you have, it's the amount of revenue that social media provides for you. Absolutely. Great, great tool. I mean, 
we have over 10,000 fans on Facebook, and I must admit our Twitter is coming up, but it's nowhere near that at the moment. Mm-hmm. But it's a great place to interact. We get a good reach with certain products. We run uh, promotions every Tuesday, and people know about it and expect it. So it's a great way to interact. And if we do have a problem with the website or something like that, it's easy to go up and say, look, we're working on it. We'll be back in a few hours or something along those lines. You're absolutely right. I'm dealing with businesses that have 60,000 likes, but that doesn't mean a thing. Just because you have likes doesn't necessarily mean that you have a great following. A lot of us fell into the trap earlier on of running competitions and share this and like this and share it with your friends and enter into competitions and you end up getting serial competition enterers, so to speak, who aren't really ever going to purchase on your site. So it's again being able to weed through the loyal fans and being able to offer things to them so that they will continue to interact with you. Yes, and it's also keeping a constant measurement. If you're going to put an advert up or going to put a post up, then make sure that you have a code or something that allows you to track. Absolutely. Go through to to the actual orders and say, right, we generated you know, 15, 20, 40, 50 orders from that. Yes. And see what works and what doesn't work for you. Absolutely. It's just a case of keeping on trying different things and some things work remarkably well and others fail fantastically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's that thing. It's this famous pixel, as they call it. You've got to add the pixel to your website and you're like, oh, what part do we add it to in order to be able to follow everything properly? But hey, thankfully, there's plenty of experts out there to help with those details because I I guess albeit entrepreneurs are on a steep learning curve all the time in updating their online skills but we can't be experts in everything and we have to rely on those who are to keep us on the right track. Just moving on then to the whole area of very nice to hear that you had orders from as far away as Australia and even the, the likes of Asia which is really impressive. Have you had any sort of unexpected orders that you've woken up to one morning and thought, wow, that was good? I wasn't expecting that. One of our biggest uh, shocks, I suppose, was we uh, exported back to China. Uh, <laughs> as it turns out, the brand that we supply is not available in China. Wow. Uh, we got a few orders in from China, which is quite an interesting concept when you Yeah, it's a bit like me buying shoes from Germany and then selling them back to Germany to the women in Germany. You'd think they'd be able to get them there, but hey, it doesn't always happen that way. Yeah, and I mean, when people are buying online, they don't always recognize where the product comes from or where it's being supplied from. So I suppose that's the thing. Absolutely. And you're selling to to people in Waterford and they don't realize that they can get it fairly close by. That's the other thing. We often get people that send us an email and go, wow, I didn't realize you just up the road. Can I come and visit and everything like that? And we always welcome people to come in and, and visit because uh, you must experience with shoes as well. The other challenge with online is, is that colors, you have a color variation between monitors and that. Absolutely. The color that they see on the screen is not always what they buy. And that's why we have a policy that if anyone buys a color and is unhappy with it, we replace it free of charge. And we actually ask them to give away the color they bought as a gift because it turns a negative into a positive as such. Wow, yeah, well, you're absolutely right. A color calibration of screens and sunlight and photos and phones, hey, it's one of those things. But that's one of the challenges with online e-commerce. Well, you mentioned um, even in our pre-interview chat that you are originally from South Africa. You met an Irish girl and hey... The heart goes where it's told and you've ended up in <laughs> colourful Waterford, which is great. And many a good night I've had in Waterford when I used to backpack around Ireland uh, back in the day. So you were involved in the medical statistical field. You've migrated into business. How do you feel? How do you feel about being your own boss on a personal level? Are you enjoying that experience? What do you think of the whole thing? Uh, it's something that I've always worked on. I've owned my own business before in South Africa. Mm -hmm. I'd been selling on and off online for about seven years, trying different items and looking for a product and things like that. I love it. It's a 24-7 thing, but I enjoy the challenges. I enjoy the excitement of of what you achieve. We've now developed our own brand of nail accessories, and that's another whole exciting avenue that we're going down. 
I like the fact that you've actually chosen something very niche, which if you listen to the other episodes on sellingonlinetoday.com, you'll see that the people that seem to be doing the best online are very much into a niche product, whether it's just hot chili sauces, just shoelaces, just particular items. And and you've chosen quite a specific area, which is within the area of women's makeup and accessories. You've niched down to nails and now you're even niched down again to a very particular setting of the Shelliac style. So really interesting. And as it's coming across, it seems like even that area, there are lots of possibilities within that. It's a huge market. What we've focused on as our niche is we've looked at when a lady's getting ready to go out, mm-hmm. she normally has her tan done, her eyelash extensions, her nails, and her makeup. Mm-hmm. And those are the three areas, though those are the four product ranges that we are working towards. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have the nail gel, we have a tanning products in stock, and we have extension lashes. So the last sort of one that we're looking at will now be makeup yeah well that's great now as a business owner as a person who's self-motivating who has to keep his energy levels high what would you say your best or your biggest strength is as a business owner i think i'm pretty good at ideas i can look at things from outside of the box we had no experience in the beauty industry and uh we're very good at sort of upsetting the market and disrupting things because I think that's where our strongest ability is. Look at something, find a way of doing it. And if there's barriers to entry, find a way to overcome that mm-hmm. because that's really where you can develop a niche and, and become a supplier of choice. Yeah. And uh, what about weaknesses? Any weaknesses? Finishing it all off. i um, surrounded by a great team so that I can come up get it all started, and they will actually keep it neat and and going. Mm -hmm. I must say I'm not one for great attention span. Mm -hmm. So once something is up and running, I like to move on to the next project rather than worry about getting all the T's crossed and the R's dotted. That seems to be a common trait among certain (laughs) entrepreneurs that they get easily bored and they want to get stuck into something else. They want to get it started, get it up and running, make sure it's working well, and then move on to the next thing. So, yeah, I can see that that strand very much in a lot of people that I interview. For someone who's starting off, uh, Daniel, what would you say to them? Because, you know, there are a lot of people that are listening to this show that may be thinking of starting their own online business or have dabbled into it slightly, may have got disheartened, chosen the wrong product or the wrong platform to sell their goods. What sort of advice would you give them? I currently work with quite a few people who are starting up, and I always say to them that small is good. Mm -hmm. You don't need a big flash website. You know, use a third-party website. Use the Amazon or the eBay. The next thing is when you pick a product, buy four or five of them. If you put five items online and you sell them within two hours, you know you're onto a winner. If it's still there six weeks later, you've got a problem. Mm-hmm. And I think too often people go out and invest a huge amount in a fantastic website, huge into a whole, amount into a whole lot of stock, and then they go, but it's not selling. There's no guarantees. It's just like any other retailing. You've got to be out there, be noticed and such like. So do it small. Do a lot of test marketing and make sure it works before you invest your hard-earned money. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, Daniel, it's all about making money. And if it doesn't work, there's no point in continuing. you got to change direction and quickly learn to evolve or you'll end up dying with the rest of the products that just come and go. So I totally agree with you there. I received some sage advice from a colleague of mine back in the day who was actually from Ghana in Africa. And he said to me, he had studied in England in the School of Economics. And he said to me, Patrick, let the structures create themselves. Don't think that you have to have a big office, have all the things, all the ducks in a row initially, and then start to sell. You've got to start selling, and then the structures will create themselves. I always find that really good advice, similar to what you're saying, where there's no need to spend thousands of pounds on a flashy website initially. 
but go out and test the market, get onto the third party platforms, see does your product sell, and then you can start looking at investing in, in a website which synchronizes everything together and makes your life easier. Exactly. If you have sales, you can overcome most problems. Mm-hmm. If you have the best plan in the world and no sales, that's insurmountable. If you had a magic wand for your business right now, what would you like it to do? I suppose the biggest struggle for us will always be working capital. Mm -hmm. And I would just say double the amount of working capital we've got available would be a huge stride. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm glad that the four of the people I've got working for me come through JobsBridge. Yes. So we've created employment in Waterford, which is, is vital where we came from. To me, if we can keep on developing people and using skills here, that to me is, is a great achievement and that's working capital would allow us to keep on growing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Ireland in that sense is ahead of many other countries, so there are plenty of resources out there. It's just getting the time to work through the processes to bring them all together for your own business. What about, uh, are you a reader? Do you read books? Have you any favorite books that you could recommend to our listeners that have helped you? I read a, a multitude of books and to come up with one off the top of my head at the moment, uh, strangely enough, at the moment I'm reading one about nutrition. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. no, I, I mean, there's so much information online and a lot of it is sort of little short white papers and little published books. And I find they really useful because you don't have to get through a whole lot of introduction and everything. They give you five or six key points. And sometimes if you apply one or two of those points, it makes a huge difference to your business. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, because we, we're we getting bombarded, at least in my area of selling online. My goodness, the amount of emails and yeah books and you could spend all day reading and you, you have to really separate the good stuff from the fluff. Really, we're kind of running out of time now. It's, uh, we, I really appreciate, I know that you've taken the time out of your busy schedule to chat with our listeners, to chat with myself. It's been very inspiring. It's great that you're so close. You're in Ireland and um, there are plenty of good groups out there too. We have a lot of listeners from the UK and from the US and from Ireland. So um, hopefully you have touched them. If they want to get in contact you, how could they contact you directly? Um, my email address is Daniel, that's D A N. I E L mm-hmm. at shellacnails.eu. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we'll put that up on the show notes page anyway on Selling Online Today under the area of podcast interviews. And we'll have uh, links to your Facebook page and to your website and to your email address for those who, who want to contact you directly. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time out. We look forward to being able to touch base again. I, I know that you're involved locally with businesses in Waterford. You're also working on a group there to help online sellers, a bit like what I do. Um, can you just fill me in a little briefly w- what that's about? Yes, certainly. Uh, we've put together a group that's based in Waterford at the moment, but we also are looking at an, an online side to it. What we do is we meet once a month, and it's only it's restricted to people who either want to sell online or who are currently selling online. Mm-hmm. And the idea is just to share your experience, uh, problems you have, and things like that. And then based on what the group wants, we will bring in expertise to talk about various product solutions and such like. Brilliant. Well, the, I look forward to hearing more about that. And um, and we'll certainly keep them updated on, on our website and hopefully we'll get plenty of people sharing their experiences, which is what it's all about. Daniel, thank you very much for taking the time out and we'll catch you again. Great. Thanks very much for having me. And uh, really, if you need anything else, feel free to contact me at any stage. That's great. Thank you. Great. Have a good day. You too. Take the time right now to go to sellingonlinetoday.com and gain instant access to tons of free resources to help you in your online selling journey. We'll see you next time on Selling Online Today.